Good morning, hello everybody. Welcome, and I, that sounds like Jackie coming up the stairs. Which is good, about time. Skyver. Welcome back. Hello. You alright? Yes. I made you a cup of tea. Okay. Are you excited to be back? Is it been missed or what? Are you excited to be back? Yeah. Is it better than the boredom of being stuck sick at home? See how excited she looks. She still looks bothered. No clothes as well. <laughs> so it's good to have you. I've got loads of jobs. <laughs> I've been saving them up. I haven't really. It's just it just arrived. I'll just quickly tell you. It's just that. Don't do all the J Car stuff, all the pencils that we're missing and the pastels are wrong. So there we go. So we haven't got Christine, which is a, say, a shame. Put my glasses on. They fell out again yesterday, my lenses. Because the screws are upside down. I know. The screws are upside down on these glasses. They're like there. I thought you could have put in another. Well, I can put them back in, but the screw holes on the top aren't big enough for the screw. Well, they're not. I don't even know if they work. I just put them on because I'm supposed to wear them, but I, I don't know. I can't even see through them because they will call me Geppetto downstairs. Because when I got my apron on, I look like Geppetto apparently, or the or the or the, the shoemaker the, from the elves and the shoemaker. Yeah. So when I go down, they go, oh, I want to be a real boy, and all of that kind of stuff. They very cruel to me so um, quite an ethereal these are filthy I don't know what I did to them um, quite an ethereal scene Kath's been here haven't you I have Castle Rig I've seen photographic evidence of Kath standing outside them which is nice I just like the colours so I thought I this I, it looks almost white on the telly but it's not it's an icy blue and I thought this would quite work well for what we're doing today because we want to keep it nice and soft and misty and all of that jazz um, let me just work out that bit slightly over halfway isn't it that the, the bright green bit what color shall I use maybe I'll use the lighter blue to sketch it all out so a little bit above halfway I'm going to just draw a line and hopefully you'll be able to see it straightish line so that's what that's the line that the stones sit on at the back and then we can roughly sketch out i forgot to ask you are you all right today um mark yes good I'm a little tired, but just press press on absolutely be a, be a brave soldier <laughs> right so let's have a look now the top fountain for me is about five fingers down from the top that's the highest point but to be honest if you just want to call it standing stones it doesn't have to be exactly the same pattern but if I kind of follow roughly and then that drops quite a lot doesn't it it drops to almost a hand width down And then it's got another little hill behind it. So is this the Peak District, did you say? No. Lake District. Lake District. And you're going... Sunday. Sunday. Well, Are you going to dance around the stones on Sunday? No, no we're, we're driving up there, driving from Sunday, Sunday, and then going off on Monday. Nice. The whole... That'll be good. Well. So about a finger width down from the lower point, there's another hint of a hill that just comes down. The more layers we can put on, the, the more exciting it's going to be. So there's a bit of a hill there that's just like just stuck. I've got the heater on by you, Kath, because yeah, the window is open and it is chilly because the wind is really bad. 
don't fight over it, you know. You've all got two uh, two cotton buds as well today. <laughs> yeah well i've done my prevent training so um if you are feeling bullied you need to speak to me afterwards and we'll we'll discuss it yeah then she'll be waking in half <laughs> <laughs> with with a sharpened pastel pencil oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So about three fingers up, we've got this the, the slightly darker heel coming down and across, and that drops like that. And there are two other hills in between that I haven't put in yet. So this one comes in and drops down. Then there's one that comes that way. And then a little domed one there. There's conversations going on on Twitter in a in a indie business group I'm in, and my phone's just going off constantly. I don't know how to quieten them. Right, so that's roughly the layers, um, and then we'll we'll mark in where the stones are going to go, and we can make that gap because you see from the back line where the stones are to the front line where the stones are is about three fingers. So I'm going to just draw a bit of a line there. Something like that. Are you with me so far? Yeah. It shouldn't be too complicated. There were like, what did we do last week? There were loads of lines. Oh, it was the roadway. Yes, yeah. there, there were loads of lines last week. Um, it was a nice picture that you all did really yeah. well with that. But there were a lot of lines to try and work out what goes where. Yeah, it got a bit confusing. Yeah, it did. Well, there was the walls, the lines, the grass, the yeah. road. The yeah, there was a lot to see and do. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do the big. The bigger stone in the foreground is about two fingers wide and it pokes over the horizon. It's good to poke over the horizon line with objects because it, it gives us more depth. And then that gives us a little bit of leeway for this stone, which is a little bit lower than the horizon. That's a nice shape. So, Kath, because you've been there, there's that, that cluster of stones. Are they in the middle <coughs> of the circle? I can't remember those. Th those with there, because they're not on the outer edge, are they? No. Because about two fingers across, we've got that little squat stone. Oh, there's John. John's in. And then the, there's another tall stone three fingers across from that. And that goes about two fingers up. So, yeah, it's a pigeon head next week, not a severed one. It's a, oh, it, does look it is a lovely, a lovely uh, pigeon. Let's see if I can show you the photo. Because I was talking to V about it when she got in. can show you next week's in advance because I know you like to know because it doesn't always sound exciting but the colours are so beautiful let me go look, look at that. Oh. so it's just the pigeon's head so we're going to see if we can recreate that in two hours probably use black a black surface to let the colours pop out see who would have thought a pigeon could look so beautiful? <laughs> right.
right and so in between that one and that one we've got the little clusters of stones haven't we there's three pointy ones and a little flat one so let's let's just sketch that in because it doesn't they don't have to be perfect yeah so i've been watching the, the crack on my windscreen growing as i was driving in this morning and i just can't wait for them to fix it tomorrow. I'm 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 just fed up the amount of money I've spent on my car this last week. I'm going to ignore that little smaller one in front of that one and put this big one in, which is it's about three fingers wide at its widest point. And then it slopes way up. like that and that will mean I can stick that stone in about there hello 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 now the pastels classes are quite popular online as well they get um, purchased the recordings get purchased a lot more and the gouache classes, but the gouache, I'm, 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 I'm retiring the gouache class on Wednesday mornings from July. Mm -hmm. And then it'll become monthly on a Monday evening. So I'm not getting rid of them. I'm just having to rejig. So it's, it's all about what's cost effective, unfortunately, because I'd, I'd teach every single day, all day. But if I'm not getting any money from it, I have to kind of draw the line. So about three fingers wide for that short stone, but only about two fingers high. Yeah, they are. Hopefully it'll look more like a standing stone circle. S sort of like that, isn't it? Do they look like that with those? Yeah. I probably missed one off. But it fits all in nicely. Well, we can change it. I think by working the way we are, it means that we can maybe smudge over and tweak it a little bit. We're doing a really nice watercolour this afternoon in sepia. It's um, a nice vintage rain scene look in Payne's grey and browns, rainy umbrellas. Hopefully, well, actually. Which is the umbrella? impressionists yeah. it would probably be um renoir isn't it or is it renoir because he did that one with the he did more people yeah i can't remember i do like the impressionist things they're a little popular Mine isn't right at all. what bit isn't right let's have a look let's have a look Sometimes it's worse when you've been there, yeah. unless you know the exact. Because when you've been there, you start doing what you think or what you remember rather than what you can actually see, and um, it can cause a few issues then, because then you, you're working from a memory rather than a reference, yeah. and um, it, it's like if if there's a, a landscape. And you've been there and the, on the reference photo there's a tiny little black mark in the on the background and you know it's a pylon because you've been there mm. if you then turn that little black mark into a pylon you've brought that background forward by several miles yeah. whereas sometimes it's best if it looks like a little black mark leave it as a little black mark yeah it's funny the brain is um there's a there was a psychology in experiment in the 70s called and 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 uh, it was called occlusion and um it, it we still do it as adults but it was an experiment with um children and the psychologist made a wall 
so you put the wall up you've got to imagine that this is the tabletop you put the wall up and then I, I need two small objects that'll do oh that'll do right so he said this is a robber and he's just robbed a bank and um, he's been chased after the police so where I'm sitting this side is where the child is and then he chases he can see the policeman so he goes and hides behind the wall and then the policeman arrives and doesn't know where the robber is draw what you see so the children would draw a wall a policeman and a robber above the wall because they knew that the robber was there but they couldn't see it and we do that in art we will especially if it's a bowl of fruit or something and you know there are grapes in the background that the, it's so hard to not get those grapes visible and just poke them over a little bit because we know they're there we feel they ought to show but they're not they're not there we can't see them so it is it's quite interesting that these kind of ideas are built in our imagination from children yeah yeah absolutely yeah so if you know something's there the danger is you will draw it even though it, it, so if you're in a landscape and you've there's you, you know there's a landscape ahead of you but you know there's a lovely little farm round the corner that you can't fit in you might still draw a little bit of it in so then it stops looking exactly like that scene but it's more of a nice diary piece then as a reference um so it's not wrong um, but if you were going to sell it as exactly that view, they might go, oh, it's not there. It's terrible. If, if you do a plane or a train and you haven't got the rivets or the spokes right, they will tell you. The, 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 the enthusiasts will go, no, that's got so many rivets that way. So it is tricky. Do you think I could have a pretty rivet in town? Well, I don't know I about know that. That's all right. Well, that's it. Once you start crossing over with a few different lines, it can feel a little bit weird. So I'll just need oh, that because I, I dropped my pastel box before you came in, Mark. I dropped my pastel box and they all fell out all over the place. So they're all filthier than normal. I'm just going to use a bit of white pastel on the cloud area, but I'm not going to smudge and it's not going to show up hardly at all yet. But putting that in now will help when we come to add it's amazing isn't it how even with my glasses on this is definitely an icy blue but the white doesn't show up very much does it or is it just on mine that mine isn't showing up very it's um it's fascinating so i'm leaving all of the powder of pastel on my paper and then I'll, I need to find a nice, a nice sky blue. But the trouble is, we looked at this one last week, didn't we? And didn't we say it felt a bit teal? Let me try it and see. Because it is quite sunny. Mm, that's very, very dry. It is. But it is a really bright sky. So maybe I'll just stick a bit of that on hope for the best yeah um oh hang on there is a lot of blue i think i'll stop with that one that one yeah try that i'll take that one Yes, you could. Or if you'd put the white over all of it, yeah. then you could have put a darker blue on top. Yeah. 
and that would have um, changed it so you can mix so if you wanted it slightly bluer you know a bit more of a, a different blue you could add that darker blue on top yeah. before you blend and then as you blend in the colors should mix a little bit and then hopefully it might mix with some of the white that we've got down here. <laughs> so because i've got a lot of the white pastel powder on the top because i haven't blended i can get a little bit of texture within there i don't want to actually go crazy with the sky because the blue is so strong it can end up kind of eating everything so we're not going to i'm i'm not going to do the sky exactly as i see it in there in, yeah exactly it's your world aren't we? happy little clouds and shoot let's just put another cloud in over here and tap 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 oh, i do miss bob I have a, a problem sometimes when I'm working with pastels that I don't go to the edge of my paper. And I don't know why I don't do that. Because I do in everything else, I'm, I go over the edge. Can I put a bit more white back on top? For that other little floaty cloud? Maybe. See, I think what will happen is if I use a bit of grey that is grey and I just worry that I'll end up it'll be too dark hmm. let's add a little bit here and there and then I'll spread it with my finger a bit of a wiggle and a jiggle because if I go too wild with the grey well, that, that sort of works I suppose I can tell you that this was taken at lunch time no yeah shadows exactly the shadows are right underneath each object um, which is the most boring time of day to take a photo by the way because of that if he'd have waited an hour or done it an hour earlier you'd have got some nice shadows on the across the grass so maybe we'll we'll make that up a little bit yeah i really don't want to go too wild with the sky So if I just blob in a few little little dots of grey and then tap it with a finger. Amazing how blue those hills are, aren't they? Yeah. They're all to do with long wave light and short wave light. Which also explains the old theory red sky at night, shepherd's delight, because red light is um if if red light isn't scattered by uh, so to get red light it means there's no 
dust or moisture in the air, no moisture in the air to scatter the red light. And that means it's a drier day to follow because there's no moisture in the air. So that's how it works. So it's all to do so that, that, that it, there is truth in the sayings. It's just that we didn't have the science. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, it's Red Scott night. Red Scott night. Down the morning. The shepherd's warning. Yeah. 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 When is it? I've got, I've got a month to wait until my dog arrives. So I broke my last one. Oh. So I've got to wait until my dog arrives. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. The train just stopped. Right. So is it coming to you now? Um, these guys, it's. Um, is it American? No, no, no. It's oh, a yeah, British yeah. Um, bike building company called Hightech. I think they're all in Nottingham. Oh. In Yorkshire. And they, they kind of source components for Hawaii and they they assemble them and ship it out. Oh, to nice. So it's a, 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 big, a big task. That'd be cool. Yeah, but I told them. And how long is that going to be? Um, I'm going to... No, do it then. No, no, it's just something I've, I've always done a lot of... I do a lot of custom recycling around here, so yeah. I want them head out for 20 or 30, 40 kilometre rides. So my kind of first rides are going to be up to Texas, oh, up, up cross country with Bradley Irons. Then I'm hoping to. Do the hell um, next to it then? The um. What do you call it? I think the Chalk Elbit. Yes, the the, the Chalk Pit, which is like 360 miles from Gosh. Lyme Regis across the country above London up to the North Pole. Yeah. <coughs> I was out of breath doing two miles down my lane the other day on <laughs> my bike. That's what I'm kind of yeah. doing as best it would. But I've got no gears, you see, on my bike because well, it's the vintage rod yeah, brake yeah, thing. Yeah. I took it to uh, Broad Rib Cycles um, when I first got it and they got so excited because they hadn't seen a rod brake bike in such a long time. Um, I, the only thing I've done is I've changed the saddle so it's not it's it's a round mushroom top saddle which is even better to sit on um it's got good suspension on it though but then my lane has got that many potholes and the and the side of the road is just broken away rubber tires or are they in a no they are no, pumped yeah yeah so because it's so it's a modern version of an old bike it's a replica no i've got a basket on the back and i have a helmet but it's called a cap met so it looks like a tweed cap but it's got the helmet underneath. Because you can't ride a vintage bike in Lycra, can you? You know, it would look really odd if you were all modern and you'd got this. Because my friend Tom Carradine, he's, he's always in his tweed suits on his um, on his uh, big penny farm. That's cool. I can look forward to that. I'm sorry yeah. for the comparison. Yes. Do you know, I'm very vintage. My house is very 1940s, so. Um, I'm just trying to look at the right sort of blue. Have you got an app called Commute? Yes. My son does all that yes. kind of thing yeah. up in, because he lives in Yorkshire. And yeah. he's done, he uses that app. No, I, I, I do myself. Yeah. I, yeah. I put, it goes down to my watch. Yeah. It's like navigation yeah. on my watch, which yeah. is the phone down. Is it, yeah. But it's on my handlebar. It's not very big, but I, I can wow. I, I navigate it across Exmoor. Yeah. Easy for me. He sends me a um, I can. See if that was me, I'd end up having to draw a picture on my route so everywhere I went I could draw a little shape. So yeah, when when yeah, my finished yeah. journey would look like a No, I, I love the technology aspect of it as well. That's clever. I have a heart rate strap, I have some GPS tracking, I've got power meter on my bike so it's on my watch. Wow. Well. And it's it's a training tool. Yeah, and yeah, I'm absolutely. Sure. It is. It's, it, it, everything's at a touch of a yep. fingertip. I'm going. You know, the back back hill. I am going to cover in white to start with, cause I might use. I was thinking. Oh, I can't. Yeah, but I bought the white a little bit further because if I use this, um, the dark blue pastel pencil, very lightly. And I don't go all the way to the bottom. 
That's the right. Your version thing. I can then blend it with my cotton bud. Go a little bit darker on the top line. I want it to feel a little bit misty towards the base so we have more white, less blue. That'll work. And then I can use the same blue. This is the right kind of blue because you, you want something that's slightly more purple based. No, but you know it all comes right in the end, I do. doesn't it? It's having that trust in the process, which is quite hard to do. Um, I I also find you know I because I've been teaching forever and a day. After students have come for a while who have never done anything in their life before, and um, yeah, you you get to a point where you really hate what you've done and you feel that you're not getting anywhere mm. and people quit at that point but what happens is when you first start you're happy with anything that you can do that looks vaguely like it but as your knowledge grows your hand doesn't catch up with what your head knows and it takes you a lot longer for what is in your head to travel down your arms at the end of a pencil um, so you think you're worse than you are but all it means is you actually know more so you're more critical about what you're doing because you you haven't got the physical ability but you've got the mental ability um so if you push through that then you'll get a lot further but if you give up at that point then you won't actually get anywhere so it's, it's quite interesting i'm going to use a little bit of this dark green pastel pencil on some of this blue if you notice i've left the the bottom Oh, she, she, what's that smell? That cooking tea cakes. Not bacon. Definitely not bacon today. So I've got blue and dark, dark blue and dark green. And then, do you know, I'm going to put a little edge of white at the bottom of each layer. And what that enables us to do is blend and we've always got a mistier line towards the bottom of each mountain and that enables us to use the same colors for each layer because we've we've sort of graded the line out a little bit you know so it's going to look beautiful I think I won't blow the pastel powder away. I might use it to pick it up a bit later on. But equally, I want a nice crisp edge. So I've... Um, I won't know, with my experiment with garden solar lights, I won't know if it's going to make any difference to my energy bill for another month. But it's an interesting experiment. Where did that go? I, I have not told you about my, have I not told you about my garden lights? I was just looking at the, the lights in here. Yeah, so I've got, yeah, every, every room has got uh, one set of solar lights in. And um, I just like to keep you up with my local, my, my personal gossip, you see. Um, and I've not had to, well, I reckon it's reduced me having to put a big light on by about 80 to 90%. Mm -hmm. So that should make a difference. However, 
I think having them in every room, it's cost me about 120 quid over the last three months to put yeah. them in. So I won't, n and I think solar lights probably only last about a year to two years, don't they, in the garden before they yeah, give they up? Yeah, they're getting rainy. Yeah. That's, and that's why, if they're indoors. Yes. It's, it's, all, it's central. Yes. Thing. And it will protect it from rain. Yeah, from, yeah, from it should last longer. Yeah, um, I mean, the LEDs. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, even if they only last a year, if I'm saving more than ten pound a month on my electricity bill, then it's worth it, isn't it? Yeah. Because I can't, I can't afford six thousand pounds for solar panels. But what I found interesting is even with in the camping world, you can't get a solar panel powered heater. There's no solar pa solar powered heating that exists. I I thought there'd be like a I thought there'd be like a panel with that would go to like a british plug socket that you could plug things in because yeah. you can get them for your phone and stuff because you it, it looks like the shape of a phone and then it unfolds out and you get four solar panels they're about that big in a list and then you can plug your phone in to charge that up but i thought there might be something for a heater but there, it's amazing that one doesn't exist but maybe you'd need a lot more energy to run something that was hot you could charge it up with kiddies Ah. That's very fancy. I saw a wonderful video where there are some countries, you know, down the middle of motorways and A roads, mm -hmm. they've got, um, they look like little columns that are free moving and they generate electricity from the wind, from the passing traffic. You know, if you think there's a bus going at 70, it spins it round and then they've got rows of it. Oh, it's so amazing. Yeah. I'm adding a little bit more green to this layer. And then it sounds good if you've got a, a renewable energy revolution coming. I think so. I, and I think this energy crisis should. Yeah, I hope so. Although I read the other day that they've just sold 60% of the national grid off to Australia. Well, okay. So I think that's probably not the best time to do it during an energy crisis. What a bit of year lost on. So you do each layer and then you leave a gap look and then you've got a misty bottom. But you could do it so you can put the white back in again yeah. if it doesn't work. So I'll use a pencil to add my misty bottom. It's always tricky with layers because there's a lot of them. It's nearly cup of tea time. The real reason you come. And don't forget, now, your drinks are included in your... Oh, I will. <laughs> I did that for me. I always thought they were, didn't I? You one? did. So in honour of you, Cass, I've I done it. I think it says on the bottle, oh, I think it's Oh, well, it might have been... I can't remember. Yeah, because, yeah, so whatever you pay for your class now includes your drink. To try and... <laughs> no. And it only gives you one drink. So it's not an all-you-can-eat or drink offer. But I just thought it might offset the balance of increased parking, increased petrol... Yeah, for, for us, um, if I pay by the app, it's an extra 50p as well for admin, even though there's no ticket and it's number plate recognition, so nobody's actually doing anything. So it's it costs me, if I if I park in town, which I try not to, I'll park out elsewhere and walk in, £5 a day. So if I'm spending about £5 a day on fuel and £5 a day on parking, that's a lot a week out of minimum wage as a self-employed person in retail you don't earn much um it's a lot of money to come out of your wages before you've even arrived are they 
I mean, you. I mean, you hope that they wouldn't have to pay anyway. But parking's going up again. Crazy. Right, if I give this a bit of a blow so you can see kind of where I'm at. Does that make any sense? Is that helping you find where you are? <laughs> you two on that back row are closer together than normal as well. I should I should have split you up. <laughs> so I'm using the white pencil to tone. Oh, to add the mist, yeah. Because that way you're not actually using loads of different colours. Um, and what it should hopefully do is allow you to to get that feeling of a bit more distance and depth because we're not we're not having to get too dark because that sometimes can be the issue is you get too dark too quickly and then when you get to your foreground yeah. you've got you've got nowhere to go We've got plenty of time. Uh, right. It's all the same colours. You can actually see, is it trees on that one on the right? The sticky yucky bit? Yeah. Don't think so. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Was it sunny when you went, Cal? Yeah. Because the roll right stones, apparently, if you count them one way, then count them the other, you get a different number. That's what they say, isn't it? Oh, how exciting. Oh, I wonder if the energy's cheaper over that one. <laughs> oh, well, did you know about the Banbury link, which is why we're called Banbury and why the, the sun links with Banbury? Um, I will read you an article while we're doing this because it is it is linked to it. I will read you an article from a while ago. Um, see if I can find it from the Independent on Sunday, the twelfth of November in the year two thousand. On the summit of Breeden Hill in South Worcestershire stands a stone elephant known as the Banbury Stone or Banbury Stones. It's on a lay or spirit path marking sunrise and sunset at the equinoxes. Um, come here at dawn or dusk in late March or early September and you will witness the alignment with the British camp on the Malvern Hills to the west and Saintbury Cross, Dover's Hill and Castle Hill just north of Brails Hill and most significantly Banbury Cross in the east. Banbury or Banbury is a corruption of Ambury or Amberstone meaning sacred to the sun and the sun has been a central figure to the Banbury for a long time because the town's coat of arms is Dominus Nobis Sol et Scutum which is the Lord is our sun and shield um, so in fact it, the, the sun link goes way way back so apparently there is a, a, a ley line of equinoxes from Banbury to Worcester from Banbury Cross to Worcester well, I suppose it's more Evesham, isn't it? I suppose the Breeden Hill and the um, the British camp at Malvern Hills. It's um, it's fascinating. Well, I don't see how you get excited about that. Here we go. Sun. 
yeah. So yeah, Bunbury is a. Because I've got penguins as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so I can, you know, if I get like a A four, what do I can have? Yeah, yeah. So I can sit on any one of them. But it does look all right. Be nice. See, I'd love to live in a little cottage up in a mountain, mm. living off grid, having nothing to do with anybody. Sometimes you have no idea. Yeah. I, 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 well, I suppose I'd, you know, I'd, I'd give in if I could find some way of getting the internet. I'd have to have a, a good five G signal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But that's what put me off buying a narrowboat when I got divorced, you know, is, is I didn't want, I, I knew the excitement of emptying my toilet every week or whatever would wear off very quickly with me. I, th I think running water and a, and a flushing toilet is kind of a... Yeah. I think it's acceptable to have technology from this era. I think so. It's just whatever works, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. you know, growing your own. I, I, I like the idea of, you know, smaller pieces of it somewhere. Yeah. It's only commercialism that's made us some. Um, okay. I mean, I'm a very cluttered person, um, but mine's all old stuff from like because I've got well, no family alive really, other than my, I have got a brother and a sister actually, but um, I, I've inherited all of the stuff and it all means something. Yeah. So I find it very difficult to um, get rid of that because it's my only link with my parents, um, but. I have a very small house and I live very simply and I'm, I'm really want to try and get rid of Sky TV now because that's yeah, going up. Yeah. I decided that once my child's TV, which is obviously I have, yeah. breaks, I will not buy another TV. Well, my TV is actually an old 1990s TV, DVD, video combi unit that I've made to look like a, an old thing. And I've got the Skybox linked to it. But... Um, I don't really watch that much telly. I tend to watch Netflix more if I'm going to watch anything on my iPad or what have you. Um, yeah, that's so I, 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 I play her in films. Yeah, because yeah. Sky do, you can get Freeview, and, and Sky Arts is now on Freeview. Yeah. So oh, that the only reason why I was paying for Sky, the extra bit, was for Sky Arts. Yeah. Um, so oh, I've, I've, I've looked, because I'm with EE, and apparently I can get, EE's um, the broadband for £26 a month, which is a lot cheaper than £57 a month with Sky TV. I don't need a phone line. Um, you know. £26 is, is about right. Yeah. Broadband. Yeah. Sure I, unless I can. If, if Sky lets me cancel just the TV um, and give me free view and then gives me a deal on the, uh, on the broadband, then that's fine. Because yeah. I live out in the sticks, really. And there's no phone box in the village. Um, yes, that it's been taken over again. I've actually got an old dial rotary dial phone with my landline because if there's a power cut, they still work. You see, because I know it's really cool. Um, but the thing is, if there is a power cut, that's the only phone line that will work because there's because modern phones like the one by you that plugs in. If there's a power cut, they won't work. Um, but the old the old dial phones straight into the socket, so I can still contact. Did you? Uh, I've, I've got an old. It's not a dial phone. Yeah. It's a push button. Yeah. Phone. It's that powered off the four point eight DC that comes down the front. Yes. So, but my ringer sticks up there. No. So mine is always just out of the way. Basically. Mine randomly just tings at half past ten at night every night it's as if somebody's ringing through and i think it could be a fault on my old 1980s phone but you know i like to pretend it's my mom so i can tell her off right let's do this how is yours looking ladies i imagine beautiful Yeah. Oh, no, then. That's why I don't know. That is what it is, 
Is which 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 one to do? Because they're all the same, so it doesn't really matter what sequence. I'm not. I, I think I've got too much of an outline of my misty bottom though. Although it it's kind of shown up far more on there than I thought. I might add a little bit of purple for this this one, the dark purple. This picture is a very V-coloured picture, isn't it? Actually, yeah. if you if we ended up with a bit of purple on those rocks, <laughs> and then added a bit of glitter, <laughs> a bit of glitter, then then we'd then we'd please both them, um, Kath and V, in their love of uh, ethereal and fantasy colours. What's the time? 5 to 11. It's weird looking on the camera and seeing Jackie down on the shop floor because she's not been here for over a week. So if I do that, I've not coloured, I've not blended anything and then I'll do a bit of dark green at the base there. They're really dark purple. Yeah. Because you can use the. I think we'll use the purples for the stones. Otherwise, it'll just be grey, which is a bit boring, isn't it? And the purples go quite nicely with these sort of muted sage greens that we've created. A white pastel pencil. It's amazing how much more um, use the pastel pencils are, isn't it? In in giving you a little bit more control to blend and. Yeah. <coughs> and it keeps your fingers fairly clean. Yeah. Fairly. Yeah. I might use a bit of that brighter green on this as well. Oh, I haven't put any birdsong on today. That's what's quiet. An hour in and I've just remembered how to do my lessons that I've been teaching for the last two and a half years. There we go. That's why you're not feeling as calm because we haven't got any little dicky birds. I should be getting a delivery of black pepper today. I've ordered a big bag of black pepper because apparently it's a good rat repellent for the rats that live next door. Yeah, I, I opened the curtains the other morning and they were running around the garden. Play. They're having a lovely time, but I don't want them in my garden. They can stay next door where they live. Because my... Um, I've no idea who they are. I've never met them, never seen them. I will. I don't think they'll care because it's so far away. They've got a, they've got a massive garden, and I've got a tiny little yard. 
so they won't notice because it's underneath all bushes and stuff and their garden is three feet four feet taller than my garden so i'm at eye level yeah. my walls are eye level with their ground level kind of yeah. um so i don't think they will really care that much because it's not doing any damage to their garden um so if i put black pepper down apparently it makes them sneeze a lot and um makes them not want to walk around eat, no so I've, I've i've checked it out and to be honest that's probably the most affordable thing I can do. Is that a clone? No, it's rat related. And I thought I only had one rat until I saw the two playing around. And they're pretty big. Which, you know, I do live in the middle of the countryside, so I can't expect to have no wildlife. But when they're digging up all of my garden every day, and I don't want them in my house. Because they're, they're about that long, less the tail. Cute little brown things they are, but not not for me, really. If I was going to get a pet, I'd have a cat or a dog, not, not rats. Yeah, although technically, because I rent, I'm not allowed animals. And I'm right on the main road, so I think it, it would... No. I'd have to have one of those cat-proof fences that kind of go up at an angle so it stops them from climbing out of your garden but then I haven't got a big enough garden because it is just a tiny yard a terrier yes I'd have to I'd have to bring him into work I could have to have a shop dog where where my ex-wife got her wedding dress from they had a shop dog a Westie and he just stayed in the wedding showroom getting cuddles off everyone yeah <laughs> lived a life on prosecco and butchers yeah well that looks fairly distant doesn't it so i'm mixing a lot of the purples and greens and the blues It's amazing with just the same colours how much you can get a bit of variety, isn't it? Ish. I'm going to slightly darken the left hand sides of some of these hills just so it feels like I've got the light coming from the right rather than above. I'm trying to organise um, something for the old town for the Jubilee weekend because oh, okay. um, our business improvement district hasn't actually organised a single thing. We pay £200,000 a year and we've got nothing for the Jubilee apart from a little paper brochure. So I said, right, I'm going to organise something for the shops. Um, but I, I said I didn't want the money, but since it's our money anyway, I've decided to have the money. <laughs> <laughs> and and try and organise something. And then you could get yourself worn out like I know, but I feel somebody's got to do something, and it's. I You're said. Not now, no, I know. Yeah. And I said I'm I'm I I will do it, but I'm annoyed that I'm having to do it because there are people earning more money than me, doing nothing. So I've I've made my feelings very clear. Yeah. yeah yeah because then they said oh we can help we can um, when when i in our in our old town business private group i said oh i've got this idea for the old town park you know for for the jubilee and then the the uh what's the, what, what's the name that they've come up with the bid advisor or whatever um said oh these are really good ideas we could help you with this and i said i don't need your help now i'm perfectly capable of doing it what I'm annoyed at is the fact that I'm having to do it. If you were willing to do it, you should have done it by now. I said there are no government grants available for the Jubilee. They, the deadlines were all last month, so I can't get grants. Um, I, I said, 
all of the good acts and singers or jugglers, they've all been booked a year ago because you, you plan events like this way in advance. Um, yeah. I said, so I don't need your help, but I will have your money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. um, but it is, it's frustrating. And I said, I'm having to work my bum off for free to do something that you should have been done. And it was like, oh, we're not expecting anyone to work to free. And I said, look, no, I'm not saying I want to get paid. I'm saying you are getting paid and doing nothing, which doesn't seem right to me. Um, they, yeah, they, they oh, no, she, she, um, oh, yes. She's a lovely lady, wasn't she? Um, no, because she doesn't work at Marx's anymore, does she? But I think no, as a councillor, she's... I don't think she's on the council yeah. anymore either. No, she was the Labour's councillor. Mm. Yeah. A lovely lady. Mm. Lovely lady. I've forgotten her name, though. But I used so to chat to her a lot. When I was When I popped in M&S, she'd ask me what they could do for the old town and how they could she help. Yeah. I mean, I've had a lot of run-ins with the councils over the years. I do. I love a good bun fight. Especially when I know I'm right, you know. I had There was one councillor that um, got my back up. Well, he always gets my back up, actually. I think he enjoys getting people's backs up. Um, and we've had some right old um, rows over what's not being done for the businesses in the town you know when you consider we don't even get our rubbish removed we have to pay for waste removals on top of paying rent and parking you know we have to pay ex excess for our bins and things it's uh, we get a bit of a raw deal as a business you know we're, we're paying more for people to have a, a town centre business, but then they're doing what they can to discourage people from coming in by allowing two out of town retail parks, putting up parking prices, um, put, charging parking. card charging for parking, cancelling bus routes. You know, it's it, it it's like what what are we doing? Absolutely. Yeah, they get the money some way, but indirectly. But they can't see short term. I, I had uh, when we had the multi-story car park in Bolton Road because yeah. it was closed for a while because it had concrete cancer, and then it got repaired. And I said to two councillors on two separate occasions, I said to one of, I said to them both, "What happens when that gets concrete cancer again and it has to come down?" One of them said to me, "We haven't thought that far ahead," and the other one said, "Castle Key Two will be built by then, and there'll be thousands of spaces." Well, it got pulled down before either happen you know th there was no castle key to there was no parking um and th studies have shown that people only walk a quarter of a mile from where they park their car and bolton road multi-story car park was a quarter of a mile from every part of the town yeah. and it we've noticed since i think that went in 2015 um since then this end of town is a lot quieter because you don't have that regular footfall because where Lidl is that's half a mile away from this shop and if you've got a couple of bags of shopping, you know, you're not going to walk from there to here, are you? It is annoying. And I do get on my high horse about it. But as you say, V, I'm not even from round here. No. Um, but then it's if... Alien. No. <laughs> I'm just using a dark green to create some fields. Well, I, they, I say fields, but I'm just drawing little... I'm just drawing lines... Can you see those lines? Shall I try and lighten in between them with my light green? Just needs to be a bit greener. Do you know what I found? I shouldn't blow. As I'm blowing my pastel that way, the powder travels along the sky and it cover and it colours my sky. So I've got green and brown bits there that should have been white. I should tip it to the left or to the right rather than blowing it forward. After all these years of playing with pastels, I've only just noticed. Right. While you catch up, catch up, K, 
cup of tea, um, gin, prosecco, beer. Can I have a, a, in a cup? A, yes. A latte, please. A latte in a cup. And tea. And a level two in a cup. With the sweetener. Yeah. And my little sweetener, please. Um,
新番組全部見始めてるそう,そう,そう、うん、ステップアップやな
No, I think Cassie's just got more white in it in the um, yeah. in the hill. I think that's, that's all the difference is. Oh, yeah. well, and and you've got some purple stuck in there I as well. I put some pink in as well, Barry, but I didn't tell you about that. You're not Ooh. supposed to be creative in these classes, Cass. For goodness sake, <laughs> just do as I tell you. That's it. <laughs> We don't encourage artistic creativity here. <laughs> I'm just shoving pink anywhere. When I looked at it um, on the phone this morning, I could see pink. When it comes on, when mm. you get from here to that one up there, they just look like a bit yeah. of pink. Mm. Right. Well, you can stick pink in if you want. I can al always, Barry, always. I think it just depends. Sometimes I can see very strong purples in hills. Mm. So, yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. Right, we'll stick a bit of green on. The green, oh, no. green grass of home. You've, have you all caught up now? Is that... You're happy now to move on? There's a sagey green... That's right. Yes, thank you very much. I'll just enjoy this now I'm ahead of the program. Now I'm not drinking it illicitly. <laughs> Boot bootleg tea. Yeah, they're never going to let you forget that. Oh, that's not the right colour. I probably will warm this up well. No, lemon it up later. It's like a a a, 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 a sludgy oh, green. Just for the background bit, and then I will use a little bit of um, a lemony yellow, just a little bit in there. Because if we can use more yellows in the mid ground, that really helps with um, distance and depth. Blues in the back, greens and yellows in the mid, and more oranges and browns in the foreground. That's what we're going to aim for. The, the um, both. Yeah, it's it's called um, aerial perspective. It was devised by Da Vinci in. Um, the term perspective had already been taken so he used aerial perspective because he noticed how the colours of a landscape change depending on its distance within the plane and um, 
science does back it up with the, the short wave light and whatever, but then the Royal Academy students were trained to split their picture into thirds. The top third was blues, second third greens and yellows, and then the foreground uh, browns and reds. So if you look at any of Turner's paintings that are more abstract, they still look like landscapes because he follows the sequence yeah. of colours. Um, but if you look in a landscape, you know, if you see an actual paint, a photograph of a landscape, or even with your own eyes, you will see it's blues, yellows, browns. So you get cool colours recede, warm colours bring forward. So you you could literally. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if I just hang on, let me let me find a, a spare picture. Oh, I've got the spare picture. So, for example, let me just use this over here for one second, so I can show you. So, if we did a sky, if I just use this in blocks, that would be my sky. Then I need to find a, a, a bluish tone. This might be a bit too dark, but this would be my trees or my land. Then I'd go in with um, some greens in there. Then I'd go in with some yellows. Then I'd change the yellow to a slightly warmer yellow, an orangey based yellow. Then I'd go into some brownie tones. And then maybe a deep red or something like a crimson. And then if I just... Almost like a rainbow. That sequence. Yeah. Look around the shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, look that that would be uh, that's how you get distance in landscape. So your clouds would be on this bit. And that that would give you so there you could then add fields and trees and what have you. Um, and then you'd get foreground areas where you get your trees a bit bigger. And then maybe a path or something along there so you can still see the colours through. So that, that gives you, I mean you've basically got a landscape there that goes back for miles and I've just striped the colours through. Um, so we've got Da Vinci to thank for noticing it, the Royal Academicians for teaching it. Um, and then for science, we're backing it up because blue wife, blue light, red light. Are you blending this green? Yes, I'm blending it a little bit and I might use a little bit of, um, I'll use some of the darker green afterwards. But I want to just keep it fairly light. Are you warm enough, D V, or do you want, do you, are you okay? Got to look after you. I'm going to cheat a little bit and <laughs> the light I'm going to have coming from the right so I'm just going to use a darker pencil to give me a bit of shadow so I'm making it up a little bit but I do want a bit of grounding under these stones because that to me that looks so much better than having nothing. In the drawing class. How to lead in and do all of that kind of stuff. Well, I think it's re it's really important, but a lot of times it's presumed that everybody knows all of this stuff. Well, I, yeah. I suppose I'm not going to have heard it before, but I could stick it in there. Good. So I can quiz you on it, can I? 
<laughs> Don't mean I'm going to get the answers. <laughs> Oh, I, I've had worse. Oh, I'm obviously not trying hard enough. Oh, is it your aim to be a difficult student? I've, I've taught year six in inner city primary school. I can I can handle a grown up. <laughs> I've had I had year six kids jumping on the toilet sinks to smash them to flood the school so they didn't have to come in. I've had uh, gang territory and culture with baseball caps and yeah. and they're only eleven, not even that. Yes, I've, I've, we've had it so the year six managed to circumnavigate the, the firewall so they could watch adult movies on the whiteboards in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> You've got ingenuity. Yeah. Top notch. I wasn't listening. Ah, okay. Well, this is it. I, I just think, you know. Really, because it's it's. The links and the police services as well. So that it's terrible, isn't it? How easy it is. Yes. You see, I've always thought that in terms of modern warfare, it doesn't need to be guns anymore. Nope. It can just be digital, and you can, you could you could well, get rid of a country's cu currency within minutes, couldn't you? Yeah. It, yeah. And then you've got Rishi Sunak saying, "Oh, we ought to put, we ought to have a GB crypto." Um, no, it's, it's I don't understand any of this cryptocurrency. The, no, the, the biggest hacker collective is actually Bitcoin. Uh, it's, it's Bankit. Yeah. And they're responsible for a lot of cyber attacks. So you know, some of the mm. NSS stuff that went a few years ago, the ransomware. Yeah. It, it is. I, I think that is the trouble, isn't it? All the reliance on technology. And uh, I, I remember when there was a power cut and I, I went to Ryman and they went, I can't serve you. And I went, why? And they said, we can't even open a till. Wow. And then we don't know how much we, we... Whereas because my till is... I've got skylights because we did have a... Do you remember we had that massive blackout for three hours and it was really widespread about four or five yeah. years ago? And there were no... Oh, mo yes. the, all yeah. the mobile yeah. networks were out and everything. Yeah. Um, I I was we were all out in the street and a customer said, oh I, I just wanted to buy a pencil and I said, oh come on in. I said, um, my till's old fashioned. There's a button at the back and it'll open the drawer and I've got a solar calculator so I can work out your change. I've got skylights. I don't need lighting. Just come on in. I can't take card payment, but I can take cash. But even the big the big stores were so technologically bound they couldn't <laughs> even open a till, which is um. Scary, really. It's, it's kind of, you know, it is, it's North Korea very active. Mm. And then, you know, you've got the cops and the PCHQ yeah. and NSA as well. Yeah. Every so often, it's because they, some, it's happened a few times, some Russian uh, internet service provider will come online and they will kind of inject information into the internet and cause all the European and US transatlantic traffic for, you know, in just a few minutes, it will all re-divert, re up, and then back to the middle. And that, and that's happened a few times. And the, the thing is, it's so robust, you don't actually notice it. Things go a bit slow, mm. but there's a huge... And then they can get all the info that they any, need, any, any data harvesting. Emails are not encrypted. No. Emails can be publicly read. But a lot of, you know, voice over IP calls can be listened into. Yeah. I read one, one of the one of the government areas are going back to typewriters because they can you can't you can't hack a typewriter so and it just prints off what's needed and you can just give it shred it, burn it. No, it's extremely safe when you think about it, and letter writing, all of that kind of stuff. I, I, I do think in some respects we'll, we'll, we'll have a hybrid blend soon because we've got so reliant on technology. Maybe we'll have to use the, the safe bits of that 
and the safe bits of non-technological <laughs> things. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's why I I I really try with with the art lessons and the calligraphy lessons to try and keep all of this going. Because, you know, I do like digital art and I do see it as a valid art form. But I also think... Yeah, and um, Hockney. And it's got its place, but I also think what happens if... This same green, it's the same green, but I'm going to... Yeah, I know. I haven't done anything, though, because I am going to get a warmer reddish brown, like a brick brown, to just rub along the bottom... that and then I'll blend that in. I'm going to use my finger for this. Ooh. But yeah, how to get distance and depth is a really interesting method. And it's what the, um, you know, the way the Royal Academy taught, I suppose, was very much in the way that I teach. I teach technique and advice step by step. This is how you do this. It's exactly how the Royal Academy trained, but it's what the pre-Raphaelites railed against because they didn't like to be told what to do. But in my ideal um, scenario, as Picasso said, learn the rules like a pro, then break them like an artist. Because I, I'm, I used to be a member of a lot of social media groups for artists. I'm going to use a really dark brown over the top of some of this as well. Um, and a lot of artists are like I don't want to be told what to do I just there are no rules in art and I said to one how do you know then you're not obeying any rules by not obeying the rules you know you might inadvertently be you know be observing a rule and they couldn't answer me and I said you know there is a place for rules because there's technique isn't there I mean I teach technique not style and that's why every one of my students paintings look different even though we're using the same or similar colours with the same reference with the same advice I'll teach you the technique but like I said on a Monday night I used to have a guy Andy and he'd paint in metallic colours we did a badger and he painted it in or metallic orange and pink well he used my techniques and he was in doing it in his own style which I think is what it's all about I um, yeah I think that's good. I'm trying to find. I mean, I found that you know, mine is drawing definitely into a simple style book kind of thing. Well, that's good. Aww. And it's nice yeah. that somebody yeah, actually does listen. Day, yeah, that oh, somebody sorry. actually listens yeah, to me. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know. So and then do the opposite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And I've had I had a student that did calligraphy that when lockdown finished, started, she couldn't do any classes and, and what have you. And then Jackie said, why don't you try pastels? And you're probably listening to this now because I know you watch later on. Um, and, and and Jackie was like, why don't you try the drawing class? And then it was like, oh, I don't know if I can. I don't think I'm good enough. And then now... She, she popped in the other day to say to Jackie that it's given her a new lease of life because yeah. she can understand drawing and she does pastels as well now yeah. um, which I think is really lovely to know that you I can make a difference yeah. um, but what I can't find is a decent dark green that doesn't look too fake I suppose that's the that's the <laughs> It will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make it go viral. <laughs> I found this darker green, so I'm just gonna skim over the grass in the foreground just to give it a bit of texture, so it doesn't look like we've got bare soil. So with that method, you know, with all of these colours, it works quite well if you use them as a base, and then you put your greens and things on top. So like we've done with this grass, I've got a bit brown. And then I've skimmed a bit of green over that. And then I can do some pastel pencil tufts. But I am going to have to lean on something to do these rocks because I'm going to get covered in it even more. But 
we have got a lot of distance in this picture really when you think about it with the the browns and greens yellows and greens and blues in the back we've really got a bit of depth which is what we want isn't it that's what we're aiming for I need to do a bit of shadow, don't I, underneath with this pastel pencil because the light's coming from this side. We're, we're making it up. Are you doing that in green or brown? Yeah, dark green. But it looks quite brown on here, doesn't it? Jackie's just reordering the um, pastel pencils that we've sold out of. Yeah. To go with my with your set. With my set. I love pencils by I think they're really nice being so but they're nice and portable as well though, aren't they? I was that was I was just going to ask. Did you go to it? Did you enjoy it? I absolutely loved it. My husband came and he enjoyed it too. It's very interesting. Everyone laughed at me and scoffed and said, "You sad person." Really? Right. No, I think that's good. <clears throat> you know, when you when you think about it, even the history of the drawing pencil, I find fascinating because you know it. Everybody only used charcoal until the 1700s. There was no pencil. And then they discovered lumps of graphite in the ground and then cut it into sticks and wrapped it in wool, got a pencil. And then in Paris, Conte, you've heard of Conte yeah. pencils, he devised a way of mix, grinding it up and mixing it with varying amounts of clay and then recompressing it to create different grades of pencil. So, you know, it's fascinating. And when you think how long art has been made in this world, you know, it's Neolithic times, it's all charcoal and chalk, but then only in the last two, three hundred years we've had pencils. And only since the Victorian era we've actually had tubes of paint. Didn't we have a fork? No, no, no. Well, we didn't always have a fork. No, that's very true. We didn't always have a fork. Fork, no. I was on a, there was a history group talking about on Facebook, which is always dodgy anyway. It was talking about how, I think it was supposed to deride the English language because it was saying how pineapple in nearly every language is an anus, but in English it's pineapple. And I said, well, historically in ancient old English and other ancient languages, everything that was a fruit was called apple. If it was fleshy, it was apple. So I think melon is apple gourd orange is apple from an orange tree um pomegranate seedy apple and frank if you think of france potato pomme de terre apple of the earth um so everything was basically if we didn't know what it was and we could eat it we called it apple which is why the pom yeah so like the garden of eden you know the apple wasn't really an apple it was just a fruit but it was translated as apple because everything was apple. If we didn't know what it was, it was an apple. Beautiful pineapple and anise. Yeah. Um, yeah, so pineapple is an apple that looks like a pine cone. That's why it's called pineapple. Because you wouldn't see them very often in England, would you, in the Anglo-Saxon times, really? So if you saw them... And then, and then an American laughed at me. If I've got any Americans watching, I do apologise. But he laughed at me because he said, what do you mean Old English? It's just English. And I went, no, Anglo-Saxon is Old English because it hasn't been spoken for like 800 years or more. And it wasn't anything like Chaucer even. It was way older. Right, I'm going to get the lighter purple, which is, I suppose, the lavender tone. And I'm just going to skim it over me rocks. Because we want it, I'm not going to blend much with the stones because that means we've got a bit of texture, haven't we? Then a bit of texture on purpose. Oh, do you know what? I haven't given you a black or a grey, have I, today? 
pencil. I, I feel the same. Sometimes my career would be nice if I had the right to <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, um, I bet he couldn't have felt like that at the mill. If you couldn't have spoken out like that at the mill, could you? Oh, I did. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Did you get kicked out? No. Good. I think I think I'm going to give you black rather than or, or do you want brown as well? You're going to want brown as well, aren't you? I could just tell it's one of those days. When I when I was in Bath, what I also learned about it was because there are several River Avons. Yeah. In England, it was because you might have already known this. It was because the Anglo-Saxon called the word for river was Avon. Yes. And when the Romans came, they got to have names for all their rivers. Yes. But yeah. they said to a, a random Anglo-Saxon, what's that river called? And he said, Avon. So... <laughs> it's the same. There's so some... There's now river, river, really. Yeah, there's a hill somewhere that's called Hill, 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 because yeah. it, it, it was the old, ancient, old Anglo-Saxon word that they then... For hill that then got adapted and then they thought it was the name of the hill so then they did the different language so they called it that then hill for their language and then language evolved and they thought that was the name of the hill so it became hill 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 and then in modern times it's hill 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 um it's fascinating absolutely fascinating i love i love etymology i find it so exciting right My mother was like that. We were we were out in the countryside somewhere, and she said to my dad, who was driving, "Jim, you're getting us lost. We're just going round in circles." And he's like, "What on earth do you mean?" She said, "We passed that that said Frost Grit several times. This this <laughs> village called Frost Grit. We've driven through it four times so far." And he went, "No, that's the grit for the snow." She was rubbish at geography, my mum. She really was. I'm I'm using the black to outline a little bit and to darken the left hand sides of the stones. Because I, I do want a bit of texture, but I probably will do a bit of blending to be honest. So yeah, we'll have um we've got a, another person coming in joining you next week. I know. Who's that then? Becky, I told you Becky's, uh, Kathy's yeah. daughter's oh, um, joining us. Because of it being a pigeon. But, uh, yeah. Is it, is it just next week you're missing for, Kath? Yes. You couldn't, you can't keep away for longer than a week, can you? Good answer. I do enjoy these classes. I enjoy all my classes, actually. I love my job, which is it's a good job, really, isn't it? It's not the most lucrative, but you know. Yeah, you've either got to do what you love or earn a lot of money moaning all the time. But there was that, I told you about that phrase, spend the weekends living the life you want rather than escaping the life you have. Which is quite nice, isn't it? Because I do know people that live for the weekends so they can escape everyone everywhere and everything and work and all of this. Whereas I don't, I spend more weekends doing more work because I enjoy what I do. So 
I'm quite lucky in a way that I'm able to buy baked beans. <laughs> it is absolutely, and currently I'm on Asda's own. They're quite nice. Um, yeah. They, there's not as much sugar in them actually as the Heinz ones. They're very sugary. Heinz are now. Yes. Yeah. I know. These are healthier, so we're going to charge you more. Yeah. Absolutely. Capitalism and commercialism at its best. Go a little bit darker towards the base. I think I will use my cotton bud in a minute and just see if I can create it. But I've still got some of the original paper colour showing through because I thought that would be quite nice as a contrast i'm just worried this lock rock in the middle background might end up just looking like a potato if i'm not careful right let's do a little bit more like that gosh it's 10 to 12. Oh, would you? Oh, if I use my, my mucky green cotton bud, that gives a really interesting tone to the stones. It's the um, food fair on Sunday in town. The spring food fair, Taste of Spring. So if you're at a loss, you can come and wander in and there'll be lots of um, food stalls in the market. First actual town centre event since the pandemic. Oh, okay. It's usually really well attended. I'm actually teaching a class here on the morning because I I booked this before they announced when the dates were. Um, but it's usually quite nice. They The whole marketplace, including the car park, full of stands and stalls with food from around the world that you can either eat there and then or take home in jars oh i'm quite pleased with that i might darken a little bit more now i've just um smudged Have you enjoyed yourself, Kath? Very much, thank you, Barry. Good. Yeah. That's pigeon pigeon head next week. And then you'll be back for where's my little booklet gone? Is it? I don't I, I only write these V and teach them. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, Blue Bellwood. Yeah, I could do with it being a week Then we're doing Puffins on a Rock. I'm not here for that one. For which one? The um, Puffins. Oh, you're not. And then a boat on a beach. Oh, you'll be doing the Puffins. Can I be doing the Puffins? Yeah, I might have to have a go at the Puffins with my new pencil. Oh, you'll like that. I'll, I'll bring them and show you how Yeah, I like it when you do that. I like it when you do work. You had enough. You don't. It's not bad. <laughs> you don't I'm, I'm, I'm done. No, that's, of course you can. I'm only scribbling. <laughs> My whole picture. That's all right, isn't it? It kind of gives us 
an idea. I don't know if I want to darken some of that sh shadow. Yeah, it is. It's the... Yeah, it is difficult when you sketch it out like that to see... And also, it's because you don't know what's you don't know what's coming next, do you? No. Um, you just have to hope that I do. <laughs> have you only used the one? So you're here next week, V, hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, get my first reading in next week. I think that's turned out all right. Yeah. You enjoyed your stuff, Mark? <laughs> what, what you'll find is that you start looking at things in a different way once you start doing it. Even a couple of classes, you look at light and tone in a different way, don't you? And colours and shape. And you think, ooh... I've never noticed that before. Maybe that's when I first discovered Yeah, you will. You'll find it happens naturally. You'll start looking and thinking, oh, that's an interesting colour or a tone or a what have you. There we go. So there's there's mine. So thank you very much for watching. Um, and thank you for joining in. I will post a photograph of this underneath the reference image that I put up this morning. And... Um, I look forward to seeing what you've done. So thank you very much for your company. Have a good weekend ahead. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.